All right, everybody. This is Ross the Fig Boss, and you guys see that large fig there in the center of the screen? That's the fig we're going to be talking about today. It's called Brojoto Nero, or Borgesote Noir, depending on what language you're speaking in. And uh, it is just basically one of the best commercial figs available. And I actually have this one here from my friend Romeo. Um, he has a variety that he has sent me called, um, hmm, let me look at the tag here, Negrette de Porquerolles. And this Negrette tree is from the Porquerolles Conservatory in France. They have a very similar collection that the USDA has and that we are preserving and housing, take, taking care of a number of varieties. The same thing with the French Conservatory there. And this is one that I think Romeo wasn't sure what this is. But this is definitely a Borges Sot Noir. And you can tell very easily by the shape. Also by look at the color of the fruits. They're almost a grayish color. The unripe figs of uh, Borges Sot Noir kind of get that, that grayish tinge to them. Um, my tree here is not really all that healthy. I imagine it's quite a variety that's just riddled with FMV because of all the attention and widespread growth that it gets, widespread uh, plantings it has. Uh, I'm sure there is a source of it that's rather healthy. I also have, by the way, another fig from um, Bode in France. Name, uh, it's called Noir de Barbantine. And Bode actually mentions that it's a clone or a very similar fig to Borges Sot Noir. But it has a little bit of a longer stem and it ripens two weeks earlier, he says. Um, and I think it's all supposed to be a little bit more rain resistant too. Uh, my Noir de Barbantine is insanely healthy. It grows super vigorously. And because of that, it hasn't fruited much for me. Uh, but we will next year, of course, really get to taste that fig uh, once we do some limb bending. Um, we're already taking steps towards that, and I'm sure we'll get a nice harvest on pretty much all the figs we have in the ground. Um, in any case, that one's supposed to be very similar, and just like kind of the hardy Chicago types and the Celeste type figs, there's a difference in epigenetics, right? Maybe the Noir de Barbantine and the Borges Sot Noir are rather similar. Maybe they're actually rather different. I'm not sure just yet. But the point is, is that there's a lot of these types of figs. There's um, Villa de Soleil, there's uh, Parsiani. Um, there's even a different number of uh, Brojoto Neros in Italy that actually are rather different than these. There's the Brojoto Nero Romano and Masseria and um, there's quite a few, depending on, I guess, the province that the fig comes from. And so, or at least the town maybe it is that the, the fig comes from. And um, so there's a lot of differences in this fig and not all of them are the same, but this one certainly is as close to the original or the, the best commercial fig that you can find of Bergiotto Nero or Borges Noir, because you can tell by the shape has that nice skin, a short stem, it's quite flat, and then the bottom there, you can see the ribbing and also the closed eye. Um, it's also supposed to be, by the way, very, very tasty. So that's what makes it a great commercial fig, is that it has good rain resistance, it has this tougher skin, and it's supposed to be able to travel well. Um, and then, of course, on top of that, it's a great tasting fig that a lot of people, I think, liken to something like a Black Madeira. So let's try this. Very, very good. In fact, there's not a ton of difference between this and a Black Madeira. Could use a little bit more time, but we had a lot of rain that came in, and I had to pick this yesterday. It's very, very good. Personally, I think among these types, these really highly tasting, tasting figs, 
So far, I like Calderona the most. You know, things like Italian 258, Borgia Sot Noir, Black Madeira, you know, all those different types of figs, I think Calderona, in my mind, is probably the number one choice. There's also Colonel Littman's Black Cross, which I've yet to try. And we also have uh, Nuestra Senora del Carmen that we have to get a handle on as well. Um, there's some others that I've grown in the past, like Raven de Calci. And, um, man, I'm not thinking of the name. But the point is, guys, is that this is in a class certainly above and beyond the others. And so for me, it's a nice fig. Um, I hope that uh, it'll start to actually get a bit healthier uh, over time. We'll probably reduce some rejuvenation pruning on that tree to kind of shake off the virus a bit. Restart from the base to get something nice and healthy. But those are the characteristics about that fig. Um, I wish I kind of knew more about it. I would say probably it's on the later side to ripen. Maybe not the most rain resistant fig, but the eye was rather closed. I was impressed. And because actually the, uh, the branches are so like grown in such a weird habit, the eyes are off also pointed towards the ground. I don't know if it's because of the weight of the fruits or because of the habit of this tree, but that's a nice sign. So, um, without that long stem, without that longer neck, that's also kind of pliable, the fig won't hang properly. And so that's my one concern with Borgia Soap Noir. I thank you guys here for watching this one. Again, check out the blog, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.